Jonah Hill is an actor, producer, and writer who starred in such notable films as Superbad, The Wolf of Wall Street, and Netflix's recent smash hit comedy, You People. As a teen, Jonah was originally interested in potentially joining the music industry, but after performing in a series of theatrical productions that he had written himself in New York City's East Village, he altered his course of focus. Once he established a working relationship with filmmaker Judd Apatow by appearing in films like The 40 Year World Virgin and Knocked Up, Jonah was officially on his way to stardom. Within only a handful of years, Jonah had already saved up enough money as an actor to buy a home in Los Angeles, California, doing so in 2010 when he secured a 3,660 square foot, three bedroom and three and a half bathroom beauty sitting on over a third of an acre of land for $1.8 million. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residence is because it's not safe for anyone. Nestled in the Laurel Canyon area of LA, a spot famed for its musical history, this single story structure is a perfect combo of mid-century design and modern day taste. Since being originally constructed in 1959, Jonah miraculously became the second owner of this property, with its first having been former My Three Sons star Beverly Garland, who lived here for 40 years alongside her husband before passing away from an illness in this very home. Upon moving in for himself, Jonah updated various aspects of the property, but was intent on keeping its original character. So much so, that he often kept a vintage roadster car outside sitting in the home's driveway. Of course, that gorgeous vehicle didn't come with the house, but for his nearly $2 million, Jonah moved into a home with an open floor plan where each room featured a sliding door that opened into a zen-inspired garden. The original home is both sleek and sophisticated, thanks in large part to its alternating use of white and wood. Every wall both inside and out has been painted white, as are the home ceilings, some of which feature large skylights. To complement this look, the floor underneath is all dark oak. That dark wood continues on into the kitchen, which also boasts white shutter style cabinets, as well as marble countertops and a giant center island big enough to comfortably sit up to four people. Just off of that glass enclosed kitchen is the open plan formal dining room, which flows into this spacious living room that boasts a large marble fireplace as its central anchor. One of the major additions that Jonah made during the time he spent living here was the installation of a theater quality screening room that comes complete with tiered leather seating. Beyond that, the home also includes a modern day yoga studio, which has been installed in the back of the property's guest house, a separate structure that also includes its own bedroom and bathroom. To make the most of his home's private hillside location, Jonah Jonah's primary suite boasts two glass walls that overlook the home's expansive deck while providing him with early morning views of the nearby Hollywood Hills. As an added bonus, the ensuite bath boasts marble floors and counters as well as a dual steam shower and radiant heating installed under the floor. With a property this expansive, there isn't all that much room for extras out back, but the home does include a private yard with a stylish and functional pool and an entertainment area with an indoor outdoor outdoor bar that's been connected to the home's kitchen. After owning this property for a decade, Jonah would depart from Los Angeles to return to New York City. He then listed this home and wound up pocketing $3.6 million for it, $1 million more than what he originally paid. Shortly after selling his former home, Jonah secured a stunning new loft for himself in the NoHo area of Manhattan for an epic $9.2 million. Boasting nearly as much space as his former home at 3200 square feet, this spread is tucked into a high floor of a building known as the Schumacher, a handsome seven-story Romanesque revival structure designed by Edward E. Roth in 1883 to house the Schumacher and Edinger lithography studio. In the years to follow, this historical building was then revamped into a full-service boutique with 20 live-in units. As for Jonah's apartment, it includes 12-foot barrel vaulted ceilings with plenty of exposed brick. In fact, this unit has some some of the highest ceilings in the entire building, while also containing contemporary features like wide plank white oak floors, black and steel accents, and custom lime washed walls. The condo was originally designed to include four bedrooms, but at some point the unit was converted to just three bedrooms to give the rest of the apartment extra room to breathe. Not to mention the home is jam packed 
full of high tech amenities, such as a heart. Not to mention, home is jam packed full of high tech amenities, such as a smart home system controlled by phone or tablet, a state of the art visual system with invisible speakers, and automatic shades. The 22 foot by 34 foot great room this place includes is an extreme rarity in New York, and it's a picture perfect spot to entertain all your friends. The living area also has four large windows and ample seating while featuring a custom made projector and screen for a home theater setup. Just off of the living room is the dining area and chef's kitchen, a spot that boasts features like a slab stone island with a marble waterfall finish. The stunning custom cabinets have also been painted in a sleek hue of dove gray. If you thought that living room was big, then wait till you see the master suite because it's almost just as long. Stretching across 31 feet, this massive bedroom boasts two closets, one of which is a walk-in as well as two bathrooms, one of which includes a heated floor and a steam shower. As an added bonus, the bedroom seating area can also be converted into another room or lounge space if desired. It's a tranquil spot that looks over the building's private courtyard garden with beautiful landscaping and perfect views of the Manhattan skyline. Jonah would hold onto this property for a number of years, listing it just recently in March of last year for $11 million. He didn't get that much when he sold it a few months later, but hey, $10.6 million is nothing to sneeze at. Having spent the better part of 10 years back in New York, Jonah was finally ready to return to the West Coast. A couple of years before offloading his Manhattan property, Jonah spent $6.8 million to buy himself a home in 2019. Located on top of the Santa Monica Canyon, this 3,100 square foot property with four beds and four baths is tucked away in one of the area's most sought after streets, behind mature magnolia trees and some very secure gates. Inside you'll find a living room that sports a snazzy wood burning fireplace alongside a bunch of built in shelving and a chandelier. Not far from there is an updated kitchen outfitted with the highest of high end wolf and sub zero appliances. Plus there's an adjacent breakfast nook that shares space with a brick pizza oven. There's also a spacious den that could be converted into a study and a formal dining room that opens to the patio. His master suite is a full on retreat thanks to its placement in its own private wing located on the main floor. While boasting a fireplace as well as a luxurious marble clad bathroom complete with a chandelier and much more. Aside from the handful of guest bedrooms, there's also a one bedroom guest house with a fireplace tucked away in the backyard. A spot where any visiting guests can also enjoy an indoor sauna and an outdoor lounge area under a secluded tree shaded patio. There's also a sparkling pool nearby. Unlike with his previous homes, Jonah wouldn't own this property for long. After a little over two years, he'd list the residence and sell it for $7.2 million in October 2021. Rather than head back to the Big Apple, this time Jonah set his sights on Malibu. Mere months before listing his Santa Monica home, Jonah spent $9 million for a mansion within the gated community of Malibu Colony. In something of an unusual coincidence, the sellers of this home turned out to be Richard and Lori Stark, the founders of the successful Chrome Hearts retail brand, and parents to Jesse Joe Stark, who was a singer that Jonah had bought his previous Santa Santa Monica property from. Almost immediately upon moving in, Jonah painted the formerly white exterior of the home a much trendier shade of charcoal gray to go along with the property's attached garage. As for the inside, this four bedroom, four bath property is spread across a 3,600 square foot, three story space that's undergone a few Jonah centric design tweaks as well. For instance, the entry area now boasts built in shelves and steps down into a double height fireside living room that features windows and French doors. Meanwhile, the nearby kitchen has been outfitted with a dining table, chic ebony painted cabinets, and of course, high end appliances. Then there's the upstairs mezzanine level that wraps around two guest rooms, as well as the spacious master suite that houses a marble fireplace, sitting area, balcony, and a small inspired bathroom complete with a custom oversized shower and dry sauna. Topping the entire premises off, literally, is a large third level roof deck that offers views of the ocean. And while the backyard might be compact, it's secluded, nicely landscaped, and boasts an outdoor kitchen with a barbecue and bar that extends all the way out to a lagoon style pool. But here's the thing, Jonah only owned his property for about a year and a half. In June of 2022, he listed it for $15 million, but was only able to cash out with $11 million when he eventually found a buyer six months later. I'm pretty confident that Jonah Hill was willing to settle for less than he was looking for because he
he was itching to move into yet another property, also located in the exact same Malibu colony. The major difference between these two homes? Jonah's new one was located right on the ocean front. Records suggest that Jonah doled out nearly $16 million for this place. Located on a compact parcel of land, this three-story stucco and wood shingled structure is separate from the street outside by a two-car garage, brick driveway, and a gated entry. Built in the 1930s and updated throughout the century, this traditional style house has four bedrooms and equal number of bathrooms spread out across 3,100 square feet of sun-drenched living space. Highlights of the property include a fireside living room with vaulted wood beam ceilings, which flows nicely from space to space thanks to wide arch doorways that lead into a formal dining room and family room. There's also a galley style kitchen retrofitted with wooden cabinets and a few newer looking stainless steel appliances. A curvy staircase leads upstairs where you can find Jonah's new primary suite that boasts an ocean view balcony, walk-in closet, and a bath sporting dual vanities as well as a tiled rainfall shower. Elsewhere on the property is a cozy den warmed by a wood stove and an office space that could easily be converted into a gym or yoga studio. As for the outdoors, there's an extensive brick patio with a covered al fresco dining area flanked by a wood deck with steps leading directly towards that gorgeous sandy beach. Well, there you have it. Jonah Hill's newest home base and all of his previous ones on top of it. Now that we've seen them all, that'll bring this latest house tour to a close. But before you head out, consider answering this question. If you could afford either option, would you rather have a gigantic pool in your backyard or only be steps away from the beach? I've said it before and I'll say it again, I am a pool girl, so as gorgeous as the beach views are, I'm gonna have to pick the pool. Let me know what you would prefer in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. My name is Kara, follow me on Instagram to chat more, and I'll see you all in another tour. Bye.